12 apostles, 12 tragic deaths. How they met their end. It's quite common knowledge that Jesus Christ died a violent and tragic death after being nailed to a cross. Sadly, so did his disciples. From getting crucified upside down and stoned to death to getting thrown in a pot of boiling oil, Jesus' disciples were put to death in very ghastly ways. In today's video, we would be looking at the tragic ways the 12 disciples of Jesus met their end. Watch this video to the end, as every part will definitely blow your mind. Without further ado, let's begin. One disciple escaped being tortured and died a normal death. One of them committed suicide and one of the disciples is completely unaccounted for. And one of the methods of execution the Bible mentions is left hanging in the balance, without the specific disciple to attach the particular reference to. After the death of Jesus, the disciples were persecuted and killed in gruesome ways. Let us look at how history documents their end. Andrew Andrew, another disciple, was also crucified like his master Jesus. However, his death had a twist that none of the others experienced. As was customary, when preparing a victim before nailing them to the cross, Andrew received a severe scourging. Andrew, on the other hand, was not nailed to the wood, rather he was tied to it. He might appear to have escaped with little trouble at first. What's the harm or violence in that? That is, until one realizes how cruel this torture is carried out. At the point when one comprehends how crucifixion works, in that the victim leverage back and forth from their wrist to their ankles, shifting their weight to breathe, one understands the delay of death in being tied rather than nailed to the cross. Andrew clung to life on the cross for more than two full days and nights in a row in contrast to Jesus, who died after only six hours of suffering. He experienced overall similar agonies delivered from crucifixion, with the simple exemption of the nails piercing three parts of the body. The psychological and emotional agony of hanging until an unavoidable death was made worse by the deliberate extension of the time required for Andrew to suffocate. Peter. Peter was also condemned to death by crucifixion. Tradition has it, in any case, that Peter was crucified upside down as well. Some sources also claim that Philip was crucified upside down. This is thought to have been done because Peter didn't want to be crucified as Jesus did. He thought that because he was just a disciple, he wasn't worthy of Jesus' death. This is debatable in terms of its veracity. The simple thought that executioners would permit a victim to decide how his sentences would be carried out is debatable. Historical records neither demonstrate nor discredit the claim. Nevertheless, it is widely held in Christian circles that Peter made the decision to be crucified upside down and that his execution was carried out following his wishes. Unlike traditional crucifixion in which the victim usually dies from suffocation, Peter's demise was likely hastened and wasn't the result of brain hemorrhaging as blood raced to fill his head in the upside-down position in which he hung. James The decapitation is a bloody sight for those watching, but the victim dies fairly quickly. Even though science doesn't know exactly how long a person lives after being decapitated, some conclusions suggest that consciousness remains in the brain for several seconds. The disciple who encountered this sort of death was James, son of Sebedi. What is most interesting about his death isn't how he died. It's how the person responsible for his decapitation died. He was falsely accused of breaking the law by someone. He was put to death for that accusation. On the other hand, it is said that James was so brave during the event that led up to his beheading that his accuser asked to be beheaded alongside James in the execution, because he repented of his false accusation and converted to Christianity. James and his accuser's heads were both severed simultaneously as a result of the executioner's coercion. 
Bartholomew, also known as Nathaniel. It is obvious how much pain being skinned alive actually is. It is chillingly disturbing to see the skin removed from the body and the knife cutting into the body as a whole. The victim's normal reaction to twist and jerk back from the knife would result in a far from perfect cut and the blade would remove muscles and tear into ligaments. The entire body would bleed out from every place. The nerves would be exposed. The victim can be killed by the shock of this torture. This particular death was experienced by one of Jesus' disciple, Bartholomew. Although he was eventually beheaded, which is presumably the clinical reason for his death, his experience was very unique compared to the experience of James. Bartholomew was flogged before being executed, whereas James was taken directly to his beheading. His decapitation was nothing more than a public spectacle to cap off the event, so medically he would have been already died. However, it is also possible to survive the skinning and die at the beheading. Thomas. One of the disciples was spared several times until his vital organs were punctured and he died. Thomas was the name of that disciple. A stabbing can result in blood loss over time, as we'll see later. Spearing, be that as it may, is unique. The multiple puncture wound did result in blood loss, but not Thomas's death. He died because a substantially sized piece of iron had been shoved repeatedly into his chest cavity. His heart, liver and lungs were all unavoidable damage by this. Despite the extreme pain, he probably passed away quickly as a result of this agonizing method of execution. Matthew Matthew died by stabbing. However, Matthew did not necessarily die as a result of having most or all of his vital organs severed by a large spear, as opposed to the spearing. He was stabbed in the back with a blade that may or may not have punctured his vital organs. Other sources say that he was burnt, stoned to death or beheaded. His death could have been very painful and took a very long time. It's likewise conceivable that he blacked out from the blood loss before his death. Since he was stabbed in the back, the lungs or kidneys would be the most likely organs to be affected, if at all. Although both are necessary for survival, a punctured kidney would take longer to kill than a punctured heart. Whether Matthew died of organ failure or blood loss is unknown. The point is that his death probably took longer than Thomas's when he was speared. James, the son of Alphys Jesus had two disciples named James. The son of Sibidi, who was decapitated, has already been mentioned. Alphaeus' son was the other James. He was stoned. He was still alive, though he had been stoned a lot. As a result, he was beaten to death with a club, and a heavy thick wooden cane was used to hit his skull. In this situation, death is likely, but not necessarily right away. In fact, blunt force trauma to the head can cause seizures, paralysis and sensory distortion. However, given the damage to James's body, any effects he felt probably didn't last long. He may have experienced seizures and become unconscious. He then passed away without even realizing what was going on, from a combination of bleeding and brain trauma. Judas Iscariot Judas Iscariot, one of the more well-known disciples, died a violent death. The only difference was that he committed suicide rather than being killed for his beliefs. However, in AD 33, he was unable to immediately purchase a shotgun at the nearby academy store. So he decided to hang himself. Hanging can result in a brief lapse of consciousness or a very long and agonizing process. It depends on whether the fall resulted in a broken neck. Assuming the neck breaks, the casualty passes out in no time. However, if it does not break, he hangs and chokes for some time before passing out. In either case, death typically takes between 5 and 20 minutes. The time of death does not vary, it's the time of consciousness that varies. Whether Judas's neck was broken or not is unknown. John John, the author of the Gospel of John, the Book of Revelation, and 
the three epistles that bear his name is the only one of the twelve who, according to history, was not executed for his faith, even though he suffered greatly throughout his long life for Jesus. Tradition says he ended his ministry serving in the local around Ephesus in modern-day Turkey and is buried there. Simon the Sealot Simon's ultimate end is fairly unclear. Politics actually gets involved with the tradition of the Apostles. As Christianity became the Roman Empire's official religion, it became politically adventurous to be associated with the Apostles, notable Christian leaders or events. This indicates that churches in places like Britain, France, Africa and Spain lacked the power and influence of places like Jerusalem, Turkey and Greece. As it was mentioned earlier, the Apostles are the subject of non-biblical traditions. Despite the account of James's martyrdom in Acts 12, a Spanish bishop began to promote the idea that James had come to Spain in the 12th century. The same is true for Simon the Sealot, whose legacy is claimed by various groups with different goals. It seems that Simon was cut in half in Persia by a saw. Judas Thaddeus The early church father Jerome referred to Jude as Trinomius, and that applies three names. Luke refers to him as Judas, the brother of James, while Mark and Matthew refer to him by his family name, Thaddeus. We disagree with those who have attempted to connect him to Jude, Jesus' half-brother and author of the same named book. According to tradition, he spread the gospel throughout what is known now as northern Syria, Iraq and Turkey. In the northern mountains of Turkey, it was said that Eros had killed him. Philip After Asian Minor, Philip served as a minister in North Africa. According to legend, Philip was brutally executed because a Roman proconsul was so enraged that his wife had converted to Christianity as a result of his preaching. There is a disagreement regarding how he died, but regardless of the method, he died because he was convinced that Jesus had risen from the dead. Conceivable, Philip's burial place was recently found. Matthias Judas's replacement Matthias is said to have traveled north, possibly as far as the Caspian Sea, according to legend. Although the manner of his death is unknown, he was martyred for his faith. And this concludes the list of the martyred disciples. Do let us know in the comment section below your thoughts on the way the disciples were killed. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. You can check out more exciting and interesting videos on this channel. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.